What's going on everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to the Game Week 13 preview. Yes, the international break is almost over. By the time you watch this, it'll only be a couple more days uh, until the deadline finally gets here. Um, I've kept the notes or the, the kind of things we want to talk about a bit shorter today because there's quite a few big topics, Mendy and Martial at the top of the list. Um, and obviously there will be a stream on Thursday to cover anything else that I've missed. So let's just start straight away. I've got Mendy, I'm looking to replace him. Who am I looking to replace him with? Um, obviously... First of all, you've got just a straight swap for a Man City defender. Very good reason to do that. They keep a lot of clean sheets. They've hardly conceded any goals this season. It's like four or five um, in, in 12 games, which is pretty impressive. Obviously, Laporte, six million now. He's gone up in price, but has played every single game. Looks fairly nailed, um, or completely nailed, to be fair. But Pep has spoken about rotation over Christmas um, and how they may have to mix things up a bit. But I wouldn't really worry about that too much. I mean, that's not news to us. We know that managers are probably going to do that over Christmas at some point. So he still looks like a good option. I think um, people have talked about his ceiling being quite low. I mean, he's already scored two goals this season. The problem with Man City defenders is, without attacking returns, it's very hard for them to get bonus. So him and Stones um, have mostly got bonus in the tougher games where they've only kind of scored one or two goals. Um, they are a team that's averaging three goals a game, which is which is ridiculous. Uh, but it does mean the, the attackers mop up the bonus. So if they if they're going to win three or four nil, yes, Laporte will get a bon uh, sorry a clean sheet. It's very unlikely he'll get bonus points as well. Same for Stones. Um, so I mean, six points per game is not bad if you're getting that over the course of four or five games. Um, then that's brilliant, and, he, and Laporte has done that this season already. I wouldn't expect Man City necessarily to start, go and keep five, six, seven clean sheets in a row. You'd expect the odd goal here or there, um, even with the fixtures they've got. So for me, I do like Laporte, and I think, like I say, six points per game is nothing to sniff at at all, even for six million. That's a really good price for that uh, points return. But I want something a bit more for my money, and you've got to take into account what you want to do with your team. So for me... Um, I've got Dean Garner and Ward, so I've got two 4.5 million uh, midfielders. I think Ward's 4.4 now. So I want to upgrade one of them to Martial. Now, if I bring in Laporte, I can't do that. I could bring in Stones, but what I'm probably going to do um, is look at Digne for Everton. So a lot of talk about him. I think um, how good he's going to be has probably been blown up a bit, um, just the same as those who don't rate him uh, completely kind of uh, turn their nose up at him. I think I'm somewhere in between. I'm not expecting miracles from him. He's 4.8 million. Um, there's only so many, so many points I expect for that, but it lets me get Martial in as well. Um, I think the one thing to consider is when you bring in a player like Laporte, you're going to play him every game, and so you should. But then when people compare other options to him, like Digne, like Doherty, um, then they look at it as though they have to play those players every week as well. But my personal aim, if I look at my defence, is Wan-Bissaka, hopefully he'll be back. I've got Alonso, who I'll play every game, and then Doherty and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, Trent... Um, I'm still not quite sure what to do with him. He's played the last three, but obviously did miss those two before that. Um, so I'm waiting to see what happens with Lovren and see if there's uh, much more rotation there before I offload him. But that's a pretty solid defence where I've got three pretty good options most uh, most weeks going up to two, uh, the end of 2018. So dinier has got three really nice fi home fixtures in the next four. And then Liverpool obviously looks tricky, but my aim will be not to play him in that Liverpool game and to pick two... Uh, two others to go alongside Alonso. So obviously I'll pick two of Doherty, uh, Trent and wan as long as he's fit. Um, so that's my plan. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get him in. He's pretty high for chances created. I think he's top um, in the last four game weeks. Pretty good for bonus as well. Um, if you're looking at an Everton defender, um, I think they've conceded three goals in the last four games. So obviously not great for clean sheets because I think it was uh, one in each of the three games. Um, but with the home games they've got, um, I think there's potential for clean sheets there i'm not expecting miracles i'm not expecting three out of three clean sheets uh, but i'd also look at mina he's a bit more expensive 5.4 million but really good goal threat the problem with picking a center back right now is we don't know exactly who's going to play um mina played the last game but zuna uh, was not eligible to play so will keen keep his spot i mean if keen does keep his spot he's only 0.1 million more than dinier um and offers a bit more bonus and goal threat whereas dinier offers a little less bonus um but chances created is on some set pieces as well um, so you're looking more for possibly assists from him. So it's much for much between those two. I like Dinier because he's more likely to, or you're, not that he's more likely to play because King could keep his place. But we just don't know for sure. And the other talk is that they might go to three at the back. So that would obviously bring more centre backs into play, but it would also probably put Dinier as a left wing back. So that makes him more appealing. So that's who I'm looking at. Um, but I think if you've not got Doherty already at Wolves, he'd probably be my number one target. 
Um, ahead of Laporte, maybe. I just think he's been so attacking this year. Better. Um, I think he's had more goal attempts now than Alonso. Two really good fixtures, Huddersfield and Cardiff. Um and I've got it here. I think he plays uh, Newcastle, Fulham and Bournemouth before the end of the year as well. There's some tougher top six teams there um, to play as well. But um, you don't necessarily, like I say, have to play him in those games. And then and the other two that I've considered are West Ham defenders instead of Everton. Now, the problem with West Ham defenders is you can't really play them this week because they're playing Man City. And I wouldn't expect them um, to necessarily get a result there, even though they have done pretty well against the top six. Uh, I believe, at home. But Man City is just a different animal. But the two you're really looking at there are Balbuena and Diop. And I've had a look at the stats for these two. And basically, it looks like Balbuena is the one with goal threat and Diop is the one with um, bonus potential out of the two. So if they're going to keep a clean sheet, it looks like Diop would be more likely to mop up the bonus. Um, but potential for a goal probably coming from Balbuena. So it depends which way you want to go. If you think there's a lot of clean sheets there, I'd probably side with Diop. If you think... Um, there's the odd chance of a clean sheet, but really you'd like some goal threat as well, then I'd be looking at Balbuena instead. I do think Fabianski is probably the one to get from their defensive options, but if you've not got a goalkeeper spot spare, um, then definitely look at one of them. And just a couple of others to mention is Trippier. The problem with him is um, you're always worried about rotation and uh, next couple of fixtures not great. Um, but he's on set a lot of set pieces um, and has got pretty good points returned so far this year when he does play. And the fixture swing is good for Spurs soon, so he's one to look at. And then Man United defenders Lindelof and Shaw. I'm probably not going to go there. I don't think Lindelof offers enough to beat out the likes of Doherty um, or Digne or Keane um, for a similar price. And Shaw is suspended this week, so you're probably not going to look there. Um, so yeah, there's a long way to go through the Mendy replacements. There's pros and cons to a lot of them. I think, like I said, Laporte offers a pretty good... Um, consistent returns but you're not necessarily going to get that uh, those bonus points or, or those goals or assists even obviously with him um, and then I'm looking at Dinier because of Everton's fixtures and I only want to play him in those good fixtures and if he does have to come off my bench then so be it um, hopefully he can or someone can convert the uh, amount of chance that he's creating let's uh, talk about Martial is he overhyped so um, I think he's got six goals in the last five games now there's a few things to say to get out first of all is he going to keep that up Absolutely not. He's got, in the last four games, I looked it up, he's got an expected goals of 2.24, but has scored five. Now, some players will outscore their expected goals over the season. I don't really want to get into too much of a discussion around that because it could take forever. Um, but it doesn't look likely that if he played the next four games and hadn't expected goals of 2.24, he would probably not score five. He'd be more likely to score one or two or three. Now, that's not necessarily a problem. He's only 7.6 million. Uh, and that's the thing about him regressing, him getting worse, and him uh, not putting out the same amount of points. He doesn't need to for that price. Of course, it's nice if he does. But if he steps it back and only scores two in every four games, that's still a really good return for 7.6 million. When you take into account there's assist potential there as well, um, and, and bonus points, because Man United aren't necessarily a free-scoring team. Um, but if they are going to score, he's likely to be uh, involved at the moment. Um, we, we've seen in the past his potential, but he's not really had the chance with a run in the team. Jose's taken him out and back in. Um, but he seems pretty steady there at the moment. Sanchez can't get in the team. Um, he's apparently having personal problems anyway. They're not playing Lukaku up front. And so Martial's kind of been the mainstay in that kind of front three um, front three of Man United. So I think as he's informed, got a bit of a confidence as well, getting him running the team, good fixtures to come. It doesn't really matter if he can't keep up uh, the performances that he has, as long as he can get something for us, which I think if you look at everything, like I said, the way he's been playing, the fact that he's in the team and the fixtures to come, I think he looks like a good buy at 7.6. And I'm absolutely, just to spoil the end of my plans, bringing him in. Um, so yeah, Martial, I think good. Don't expect six goals in five games, but then you shouldn't really for 7.6 million anyway. Um, differential captain. So a lot of people are looking at the away games for Aguero and Salah and saying they can pick a different captain. Now, Richarlison is probably the standout there because he's got Cardiff at home. And uh, people have asked my opinions on whether it's a good week to have a differential captain. And I think yes, because... There's not a standout. Aguero and Salah have done really well for us, especially when we've captained them at home this season. There was a bit of a rotation going for the first kind of 10, 11 game weeks where they returned every single game if you rotated them. So I can see why people are looking away. And I think Richardson looks like a good option. He scored for Brazil during uh, the international break. Um, Cardiff's obviously a really good fixture at home. I still think he's the main point for their Everton attack. You'd expect them to go and attack Cardiff. So 
Is he a good differential captain? Yes. Um, Jimenez at Huddersfield. Look, I'm happy to have him on my team. Um, third striker, but I don't think I'll be captain him anytime soon. My biggest worry for people that are doing it is they're kind of discounting Salah and Aguero because of a waveform. Um, if you take a closer look at who they've played and what they've done, so Salah has played away. He's played Palace, two assists. Leicester was the blank. That's probably the standout. Huddersfield, one goal. And then Spurs, Chelsea and Arsenal, so top six teams. So tough teams, tough to get uh, to get points against them. And then Aguero is very similar. He's played Arsenal, tough. Liverpool and Spurs, both tough games. Um, Wolves is the one that he blanked in. So like Leicester for Salah, that's the kind of standout. Um, but then he played Cardiff and got a goal in that one as well. So I think for the easier fixtures, they've both got points in uh, the ones they've played. Um, blanks against Leicester and Wolves. I don't think that's too much to worry about. At the end of the day, they're not going to score. We wish they could score in every single game. That's not going to happen. And I just think both West Ham and Watford are probably um, good fixtures to play away. I think West Ham is probably the better fixture. Um, although, like I said, they have done they have done quite well against top six teams. But I think Man City is just a different uh, a different kettle of fish. So I'd actually be happy captain either of these, and I'm probably not going to go for a Charleston because um, I think Aguero and Salah are such good players that they're going to get points in these two games, and I'm not too concerned about that away form because of who they've played. Um, Aguero, for example, he's got Watford are coming up next is his next away game, and he's got a really good record against them. And in general, I've looked at Aguero's away record, and it's pretty good. Um, there's nothing really to be concerned about over the last couple of seasons. I don't see any reason why that won't happen. So I would expect one of them, if not both of them, to score this weekend. Will they go on to get two or three goals? Look, maybe not. But I still think um, because of the team they play for, because of the quality of those players, I'd probably captain them over Richarlison, um, even though he is the main focal point in that uh, Everton team. So I think it's one of those weeks where if someone says to me they're captain in Richarlison, I wouldn't look at them like they're crazy. Um, but I'm probably not going to do it myself. And I'm probably going to go for Salah because I'm very close between Aguero and Salah. And when it's that tight, I'll usually end up for the midfielder. I know that he's not very good for bonus and Aguero um, could return bonus if he gets attacking returns. But Salah gets the extra point for the goal straight off the bat. Um, potential for a clean sheet uh, point as well. So he's who I'm probably going to captain. Um, but yeah, for sure. Look at differentials if... Uh, if you're going to do it any week, it's probably this week so far for the whole the way the season's gone so far. This is probably the week to do it. And then a couple of other quick points. Fraser and Wilson, look, people have still got them. I think if you're holding on to them, I can see why they've done really well for you. For me, you have to forget what they've done. They've played really well. Bournemouth have played really well um, as a whole. Uh, but the fixtures coming up are super tough. I think they play something like five in the next eight or nine games against the top six. I would put money on the fact they won't keep up their points return they've done so far. Now... That doesn't necessarily matter because similarly to Martial, for their price, maybe they can step it down a bit. Um, and obviously, if you've got the likes of Wilson for 6 million and Fraser for 5.5, then you'd maybe want to keep Fraser in particular is having a super good season. I think for Wilson, look, a swap to Jimenez. Um, Jimenez has got the fixtures. Uh, maybe if you need a bit of money, you could do that. I don't think there's a rush to get those players out. But at the same time, if you've got plans around them, especially saving money, um, then I think I would look to transfer them out. Look, it could backfire, given um, some of the easier fixtures they've got in this run. But I just think the tough ones they've got are going to outweigh um, the easy ones by quite a long way. And their points are going to dry up. And I think after this, like people are saying, I'll form over fixtures because Wilson scored against Man United. But I think um, as the next couple of weeks goes on, we may be saying, oh, look, actually the fixtures affected his form. And then perhaps he gets his form back when the fixtures ease up a bit. So for me, they can go. Um, but I don't think there's a rush to get rid of them. So if you've got other things to, to worry about, then look at them first. And then Ranieri in. I just wanted to touch on this. Obviously, he did so well with Leicester winning the league. He's come to Fulham. It looks like he said he's going to play a 4 4 2. So that's likely going to bring another striker into contention. Um, similarly to how they did at Leicester with Okazaki and uh, Vardy in the title winning season. Um, now, we don't know exactly who that's going to be uh, yet. Um, uh, and I really want to, like people are saying, is Mitrovic now an option? Like I want to see Fulham play. They've not got the best fixtures. They've obviously done really badly. Can Ranieri turn it around straight away? We just don't know. So I want to see how they set up. If someone else comes into contention, maybe in midfield, where does he play Schürrle and, and, and questions like that? Does Sessegnon um, keep his place? I mean, you'd you think Schürrle, Sessegnon and Mitrovic would all be playing, but let's just see how they set up for the next few games. Can he get them fighting? Um, I'd say morale is quite low at that club, the way they've been playing, but maybe he can turn it around. So... Yeah, quickly touch on that. Let's let's see how they do. And then in the coming weeks when Fulham's fixtures uh, clear up a bit, maybe we can look at them. And then my plans, I've kind of already covered it, haven't I? Mendy out for Dinier, probably. 
probably. If I didn't have Doherty, he'd definitely be higher up my list. I'm not going to go for a Man City defender because I just think... I don't want to use the word boring, but I, I just think the ceiling's not there for me. The, the bonus points is a problem. Although over Christmas, maybe... Um, maybe they'll keep clean sheets and not score as many goals. But for me, I, I just don't want Stones. I think there's a rotation risk there. Laporte um, is six million now, and it doesn't let me get Martial in. So if I could afford Laporte, would I go for it? Possibly. Um, but I'd rather just get the money out of my defence. Go for Digne. Everton's good fixtures, and I'm bringing in Martial because it's nice to get a Man United player finally. Uh, and then captain will probably be Salah. I don't think I'll switch it to Richarlison. The most I would do is probably switch it to Aguero. But right now it's on Salah. Let me know what you think of those decisions. Are you going for a differential captain this week? What do you think of the points I've made? Is Martial overhyped? Is Laporte the way to go for Man City? Let me know in the comments below. Like this video if you've enjoyed it. We much appreciate it. And subscribe if you're new around here. I'll catch you at probably 9.30pm on Thursday for the next stream. Um, otherwise, good luck in Game Week 13. And I'll catch you next time. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Cheers all.